Well, my friend, absolute pleasure to be here today. You're a legend. I read read your bio. You're not a legend yet. No, uh, okay. I, I like that. I like that uh, that mindset. So I've seen clips. I've seen you know streams and stuff of like when you guys are playing at LAN. That atmosphere is crazy, bro. Oh, there's nothing like it. I was used to getting booed like last year just because like Optic dropped Porter. You know, Crimson was like a villain. He was like, oh, like I don't like these guys. Everyone kind of booed us from the green wall. I was used to that, like being like booed, being the underdog. So like. Now I go into this season with Optic, you know, everyone is cheering for us. Every little play we do, everyone's going crazy. So like, it just gives me chills every single time. Like every oh, single I time I go on stage, people are just, you know, going crazy for us. Like, I love that feeling. Like I'll never miss that feeling. No, ever. And you'll never, you'll never get used to it. And that's, that's a good thing. Today's Dexerto original is brought to you guys by Totino's Pizza Rolls. You guys are in a time crunch. You want to get back to your game. Heat your oven up to 425 degrees. Throw them in, get back to gaming. So you've been gaming for a while. You've been very successful. I would put large amounts of money to say that you're gonna continue to be successful. Appreciate it. Um, who would you say is like your biggest inspiration that you, you owe a lot of your success to? Who would you say that is? I would honestly say I'd copy like my uncle because I'm pretty sure my uncle looked up at Walshy. So back in Halo 2 days, my uncle was actually a semi-pro. His name was like MLG Cyro. So he's honestly the one that got me in the game. You know, I would always go to my grandma's house because we never had an Xbox, we never owned one. So I'd go to my grandma's house like on the weekends and then I'd literally sit in my uncle's bed just watching him game like 10 hours a day. Just watching. Just gaming. I was a, I was literally just so addicted. I would and just watch. At what point, what Halo was this? I remember him playing Halo 2, but I do remember playing Halo 1. But like, I just can't remember that like yeah. far deep. And then once, you know, he got off, then that's when I got on and kind of. That was, it was your turn, yeah. Yeah. So, so you that's probably how started. you learned you learned a lot from him. How old were you? Like five, six when this was all happening? Probably. I honestly don't even know. Like, did, did he ever like give you any pieces of advice or anything like that? Like when you were younger? I mean, he definitely probably did give me advice, but I just I just forgot. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I have no idea what he taught me. He obviously taught you were me just interested. You're just sitting there and you're I like, just, this, this is so locked. sick. Like there was like I wasn't I was just locked. Like literally, I would just watch him. He would get off as soon as he got off. That's like. I couldn't play multiplayer because like obviously he didn't let me, so then I played the campaign, I just go from there. Like I was literally just so addicted by just watching and playing in the campaign. I love that. So what was like your first steps into, you know, I wanna go, I wanna enter into this event, you know, like whether it was LAN, you know, online, like where did it all start? I remember watching the MLG players play in the tournament and then I was like, hey, I like you know, I wanna be that like that one day, like just watching these pro players compete, doing what they love just for like their job. And I was really like inspired from that. So Halo had an age limit where like you can't compete until you're 18, I think it was or whatever. So finally, when Halo 5 came out back in 2015, I was like 14, 14, 15, around there. All I remember is that I played about a week or two and then I quit because I couldn't compete just cause like, I was like, dude, this is just- You were bummed, yeah. I was just so bummed cause I, like, I realized like I can't compete. And then for whatever reason, they changed the age limit for me. Watch so wait, they, they changed the age limit? Specifically for you? I'm almost positive. That's what from what I remember. Like I literally remember like You know you are damn good at a game, <laughs> dude, when they're changing the whole ass age limit. I'm for pretty you. sure that is what happened. So once they switched the age limit from there, obviously I was grinding the game. And then our first event we got top six at uh UGC St. Louis, I'm pretty sure. Top six my first event went up sixteen. No, that's crazy. I'll take that. And then We should have got top four. We should have been straight rip in game five. But, but at that point you were hooked. Oh yeah, no. I mean, that's usually how it goes. Like you know, you go to your first event, and especially if you pop off, you're hooked. Oh, I was. That was like, I, I need to win an event now. See, like, my so, goal was to get to the event. Now I need to win the event. That's that's like. Oh yeah, that was the next. So first event, sixth place, sixteen. What happened after that? At that event, we had no sponsorship, but I'm pretty sure our next event, we're like looking for organizations just, just cause like we play top six. So like we just thought, you know, an org would want us or whatever. So from there uh, we got Splice. I'm pretty sure my salary was like 1600 maybe, or it was either 1600 or like 2400. It was something like that. Okay. That was like my first contact that I ever got. So that was like a month. So when I was like 16. For 16, then, that's, a, that's a lot of money. Yeah, that's, a, that's pretty good. So. I mean, that's just like the salary. That's not even including like the tournament winnings and yeah. stuff like that. So uh, yeah, we got a splice. And then from there, fast forward two events, we placed like the top four, top three, something like that. I honestly don't even know. We made a roster switch. So then it was me, Renegade, Eco, and Seller. And then that team, we won like three events in a row. We won a world championship. We were like the most dominant team for like a year. Well, the, the weird thing is that so like obviously, you know, traditional, you know, esports, everyone practices every single day, right? For us, we were so ahead that we didn't even scrim. Like we literally every every day was just like a off day. Like we just 
You were living all, the dream. Yeah, all we did was just play matchmaking and, and just warm up each other playing like 2v2s and stuff like that. I'm starting. So I'm about to reach behind me, grab some Totino's pizza rolls, and we're gonna eat. Let's do it. All right. When you open these up, I want you to think about a loss that you had in COD. And I want you to show <laughs> the aggression out on this bag to open those up, all right? All right. Do it right now? Absolutely. Let me, let me just get some grip at least. <laughs> all right, I'm ready. Go crazy. All right. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that last one's know. pretty upset, right? <laughs> All right, let's put these out here. Let's lay them on. But you did a number on that bag, man. What uh, what loss were you thinking about right there? The, the entire season, honestly. No, okay, no loss. I respect it. So we're gonna put these in for like 15 minutes. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. So 2017, uh, you know, the world championship happens. Let's let's move past that. What was like the next big step or like after you guys won the world championship, what happened? Like, you know, did the roster stay together? Did they split out? People go their separate ways? Yeah. So in 2018, they announced, Halo announced that they're gonna, this is like the last ever Halo 5 tournament. And it was really weird. Like looking back at it, just cause like, I'm pretty sure Fortnite came out during the, in 2018. From there, I was like really addicted to Fortnite. Yeah, no, as, as, <laughs> as of you know everyone else, yeah. I was so addicted to Fortnite. So like I was because obviously we didn't practice or whatever. So I was just playing Fortnite, and I was getting on Halo Five, like doing both. And then I don't know, dude. Looking back at it, I'm really dumb just because like I didn't really practice to play in the, like the last few Halo tournaments. And we, I mean, we like won an event, but then we got like second, and third, or whatever. But. Like looking back at it, I obviously should have played Halo Five and you know kept winning the tournaments or whatever. But my thought process is like, all right, I'm, I'm re I like I really enjoy playing Fortnite. Like I'm not really sure if I tr should try going pro in this or whatever. So then I'm not sure like what happened exactly, but I switched over to Call of Duty Black Ops Four whenever that came out. And I was 17 at the time, so I couldn't really compete. Yeah. But I wanted to like play S and D just to get like my name out there. And it was like me and some guy named Andrew Onyx. We we're playing like two v twos. And from there, like, we hit up Ender, which is like Illy and Selium. They were like a, a really good duo in 2v2. So then, you know, Illy would pull about like a thousand plus viewers every stream. So, uh, you know, we challenged him for like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, something like that. And then from there, we like, we would always like split, you know, winning each other. So honestly, just from the, the 2v2 alone, playing like the high wager and like having everyone watch us, that's like literally how I got known from Black Ops 4. Like if you, that's like the best way to get known is just playing someone that if you're confident in betting them $100, playing them and then, you know, obviously you want to beat them. And if you do beat them, then that's like how you're gonna get known. After Black Ops 4, you're starting to pick up steam and stuff like that. So like from there on out. I was 17 at the time and keep in mind, I'm still on Splice and they have a, a league spot, which was Toronto at the time. They're called Ultra Toronto. Okay. So like they contacted me and like I'm under contract with them. So they're like, hey, you know, we want to work with you. We want to give you a contract for, you know, us being, or to be on the bench. But, you know, I obviously wanted to be on a starter spot if I could as well. Yeah. So then from there, um, do you know Huke? I do not. So he had a CDL spot under Envy. So he was looking for like entire team. Like it was just him looking for entire squad. He contacted me saying like, hey, like, do you want a team? And from there I was like, of course. Yeah. So then it was me, him, Illy, and then we got Crim6 and Clayster. Okay. Whenever that was happening, it was kind of weird just cause like I had uh, basically, cause I was still on a contract. So I was kind of like, I had to say, yo, like I cannot, like I don't want to play with you guys. Like I want to play with these guys really bad, et cetera, et cetera. So then from there, like the biggest, buyout ever happened like the buyout was 300,000 which is like the the most buyout or like the most insane buyout in like the cod league yeah like, like 300,000 like that's just crazy especially on someone that's like never played a match in the cdl so so your buyout alone just for you was 300k 300,000 so and not I'm a full not, team just like you alone yeah <laughs> and that, that's Jesus. not even and the thing is like 300,000 at the time was the most and everyone was talking about it afterwards and etc cetera, et cetera, oh, i'm but, sure but yeah i mean shout out kyler though because he's the one that literally took a pick off from him Crazy. Yeah, so that year, like, I mean, I was, like, decent, but I wasn't, like, anything crazy. So then I was just trying to get better every single day. And then, uh, honestly, the biggest turning point was when, because, like, Clay and Krim, they would always, like, critique me a lot and, like, nitpick me and, like, obviously try to get me better. It was sort of, like, the best or whatever, but it would kind of mess me up just because, like, I would overthink and, like, you know, in scenarios and, COD, especially in COD, like, you need to, like, think like that yeah. and, and just go with it. 
And for me, it was kind of like I was always second guessing, like if I should make a play or not, just because like I didn't know if it was bad or good. So then that was like my biggest thing that like I really struggled on. But then one thing that helped me was Kyler like stepped to the side. He was like, "Hey man, like you know, just do you. Like you're I don't, I don't know what he said, but he he basically just told me like play my game. You're good. Like do whatever you think is best for you. So, yeah, you like, know, you've proven yourself to be yeah. able to play at that level. Just do your thing. Yeah. So from there, I was like, all right, bet. Like this guy just gave me confidence. So then. Honestly, from that that point on, like I if just, somebody told me, "Yo, AD man, just do your thing," I'd be like, "Yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm doing." <laughs> so <laughs> you no, you, but, you you were the man with the plan. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like from there on, I was just so confident, in, like everything I did, and then it was just a big turning point. Like you could just tell, like that how like what those words to be. It was just like such a da- drastic change, just because like I was just so confident in myself. And then yeah. from there, I literally went from a flop to like you know a star or whatever. Yeah, world champion. Yeah. Well, two different games. Rookie of the year, MVP of the season, crazy. A couple accolades, you know, just a few. <laughs> so after the world championships, you won, got your ring, champagne. Well, not two at this rings. time. Yeah, not, a, you know, no champagne at this time. You're still way too <laughs> young. So yeah. two rings, Halo, COD. What's the storyline after after the, the COD world championship? That so gap. from that point, uh, we tra- like it was really, really hard because they announced the, like, I think a day or a couple days after that, we were going back to 4v4 COD. I just feel so bad for like anyone that we had a job. So we came to like a team decision. Like, all right, we're, you know, we should probably go Porter. Like, we probably think that's like our best, you know, decision going forward. So from there. It's such a tough situation. Oh, it was man. literally the worst. Like it, we literally had to do it like three days after we won the event. So at this point, who's on the team? It's uh, me, Hugh, Illy, and Cryptix. Okay. It was a really unfortunate year, honestly. Like I just... It was just the worst. So you were not a fan of the, oh, of the cold. Fan. Okay. Well, I mean, well, Cold War I enjoyed, but in terms of like team, the team aspect, the, okay. our dynamic. That comp you're with Cold War oh, for yeah, you personally was, and the team was kind of rough. Yeah, it was rough. Uh, I would say that for sure. But I got told that like we could be possibly merging with Optic. I was like, what the fuck, yeah. Optic? And I was like, from what there, was that like for you? Were you? I was like, stoked. Bro, I was like, what? Yeah. I, I immediately thought of the color green when they said that. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, just thinking of the jersey and everything. I was of like, of course. What the it wasn't confirmed until like finally, you know, we went on a call all together, basically talked about it, and they're like, "All right, yeah, we're merging. We're gonna team with me, Scum, Dashy, and Illy, which is like that ideal teammates that you would want. Like yeah. they're just all superstars. So we're in Optic now and stuff like that. We're streaming. We have a thousand plus viewers and, and all that good stuff. So we're really confident going into the season with a new fresh team. What was it like meeting Scum for the first time? Like. For you personally, like how was he? Like where was it? What, what was it like? What was the atmosphere like? So once the merge finally officially happened, I mean I've seen him through events, but like we've never interacted or whatever. Very first time in time of that I saw him, you know, he comes up to the Dallas office. So we're there. I'm just waiting. You know, I, I get there to do the content, and then you just see him and Brandon get up or like walk towards like our room that we used to play in. And then he was like, hey dude, what's up? And then yeah, and then that's like our first interaction. I was just laughing just because like. Seth is just funny, like just the way he talks is just like, he's funny. But yeah. So were you were you were you nervous? Were you kind of just like still I was, still just, I was stoked. just so like you're probably just stoked. I was like, excited that like this is all even like I'm joining Optic. I'm teaming with Brendan Ender, Seth, like more an Optic. Like it was just it was just a, it's such a cool moment, honestly. I definitely didn't know how he was gonna be as like a teammate in terms of effort and like passion. He has it and like he's there every single time early. He's always doing like what he needs to do. You know, he's like. He's kind of like that. He's just, he's just like a sponge. He's literally a sponge. You tell him anything, he's doing it. Recently, you had two teammates that they kind of like were not on the roster, and then what was it like? Forty-eight hours later, they were back on, <laughs> on the roster. Yeah. Can you can you go into that a little bit? Yeah. So our season was very. I don't even know the word I should use, but it was very unfortunate. Honestly, just like our entire season, it was from inner thumb to you know us having internal problems, seeing I died, stuff like that. We're just like. Me and uh, Seth and like Ray were like thinking like what you know what do we think we should like what is the best option like here Seth went to uh, I think Malibu or something like that for like a week or two and then finally whenever he came back we were t- discussing and then everything happened like so fast we were gonna tell Brandon and Ender but then I guess they got told from other people and then that kind of like rushed everything we weren't 100 million percent on like we're gonna drop him is what I'm trying to say like. It was kind of just forced. So then from there, we're like, all right, now we actually have to make roster changes. So, uh, yeah, from there, they were dropped for 24 hours. So they, they, then, they get the news, and then it becomes official. Like, how did the rest of, like, social media and stuff like that react to it? 
I, everyone thought it was just like a prank or something. That's honestly really what, yeah, just because like we're dropping Ender and Brandon. Everyone literally thought it, like we we're just trolling. So that same day, once we dropped on on you know social media or whatever, um, we finally had a team talk. Like all four of us, we you know hashed things out. We ended up uh, you know we we're like all right, let's just play together. Like we're all family on this team, so like we you know we came down to conclusion. We just sat down and talked, figured stuff out, and then from there. Um, yeah, we're going into the next season with the, full, with the same team, and I'm excited for that because I, I love these guys. I truly do. Like, no, that's good. I I hate being on teams like switching players stuff like that. Like, oh, of course, I hate that stuff. So, and and Seth playing as well. Like, I don't, like you know he's 28, something like that or whatever. So, uh, I'm sad. I'm glad to see him competing again too. How much longer do you think he has to play? Because I don't think the world is prepared for <laughs> for that statement to come out. Uh, if he enjoys this, because like this this game that we're playing, it's two years. Because like every other cod is one year after one year after one year, but this game is two years of competing. So if he enjoys it and like you know we find success as a team, then I I feel like he'll play next year. So speaking of uh, modern warfare, from what from what you know, I know there's not a whole lot out. I did play the game. The mechanics compared to MW to this game is very it's like somewhat similar. The jump is really similar, but the only thing that's really different is like the the sliding. It's not as impactful how the game that we play right now is. So. Uh, there's that and I feel like a lot of the Warzone side of the community is gonna really hate that because the sliding mechanic is like a huge thing that's like kind of nerfed in the new game so I'm not really sure how the you know the community is gonna react to that but honestly the one thing that I took from it was the gun skill it actually it seemed like it took skill but I could be wrong on that though okay so it seemed like it took skill which is like a really good thing because I'm not sure if you know but the previous CODs like aiming has you know you change one setting and everyone has aimbot if they somehow make MW2 uh, you know, the skill gap in terms of like aiming and stuff like that, then I definitely think we can, um, it'll just be, be, be more funner, honestly. No. If that's even a that's word. More fun, funner. Funner. So, pizza rolls are done. I do want to continue this conversation, so I'm gonna go over here and grab these. I do not want you touching these because if your hands get burnt, I'm gonna go into hiding. So, this might be a silly question to you, but have you ever thought about getting your hands insured? Wait, so like, how does that work though? Like, how much money do I? <clears throat> how much do you have to pay a month? Oh, you have to pay a month. I don't know, man. I'm but not. How, uh... But how do you get up to like the the amount of money where you could like fully retire? How does that make sense? Well, you first of all, you'd have to get insurance and then destroy your hand. <laughs> I don't but like, think you want to do that? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, other than that, I don't know. Um, how much money do I get? It all depends on what you want to pay into it. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Stop. You're, you're, you're stressing me out. I don't want you over here like breaking your hand and stuff. No. So these should probably be cool by now. I personally want to try something. I want to mix some salsa and barbecue sauce. So I'm really hoping that this doesn't uh, destroy me later, but we're going to try it anyway. Are you sure you don't want to try this? Me with sauces, dude, I, I puke. Really? Dude, I'm, I'm not a sauce guy. You're not a sauce guy? I only guy. like barbecue sauce. Honestly, it doesn't really... Oh uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, God. Nah, nah. Is that gonna be that bad? About to find out. <laughs> All right, you don't have to dip it in there, but I am, so I will grab one. Cheers. What if this just destroys me? Mm. It's actually really good. It's actually really good. I, I I love it. It's it's good. You've been doing the whole gaming thing for a while. Now that you're with Optic, like, what has been the difference between your workload of content now and, and before then? Yeah, so whenever I transitioned over to COD, my main focus was, like, being, you know, the best teammate, best player. I could be on, like, obviously what, whatever team I'm on. But then, like, slowly I realized that, like, you need to build up your brand as well just because, like, you know, gaming is not forever and stuff yeah. like that. So, like, you need to build up your brand, and I understand that. So I wasn't – I was doing content, but I wasn't – like, you didn't uh, prioritize that. Yeah, I, I didn't prioritize okay. it. Like, I which is, I feel like, is a, a pretty common thing for like people that want to, you know, pursue esports competitively. You know, mm -hmm. like they just want to focus on grinding. grinding yeah, exactly. Grind, grind, grind. So but that's what I basically what I was doing. I was focused on competing, and then from there, once I joined Optic, you know, obviously they're really big in terms of like content creation and stuff like that. So whenever I joined Optic, I took full advantage. Okay, yeah, full, of, of like, full. you know, the tools that Optic was, was offering you, you know, yeah, like took, yeah, editors, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, you know, basically took designers. advantage ever since I got on Optic just because like, you know, they're Optic and like everyone, Green Wall, they, they all love that stuff. And oh. I, I enjoy it as well, like doing content, like I enjoy streaming, interacting with people just because like, 
just fun. Like oh, yeah. gaming while talking to your viewers is just fun. Like I started posting on YouTube, TikTok. But, what was what was the growth spike like? Oh, it was good. Like YouTube, I mean, from starting my channel with like, you know, only getting like a thousand views, going all the way to like 50,000, like that's a drastic change. Huge. Like, that's a huge change. So like, I saw that and then from there, I kind of just wanted to do more and I enjoyed it as well. It's kind so of it like, it's, it's addicting seeing, you know, you post a video or a clip or something it, Oh yeah, 100%. It's, oh yeah, you're sitting there refreshing. Especially if you enjoy it. Like if you oh, enjoy yeah, it, like, sure. it's, it's like you get dopamine. So, oh yeah, it's sick. So I from there, it. like, yeah, I mean, I would just stream and then, now what honestly helped me is like, ever since I joined the Optic, I just have like a lot of people around me that kind of just support me and like want to help me and stuff like that. So like honestly, just having people come into my chat saying like, I'm glad you stream because it honestly helps me through, you know, whatever I'm going through. And I get that pretty often. So like the fact that my stream is able to do that for these guys is, Honestly, really humbling for me. If there was another game that you could... Apex. Apex! Yeah, I love Apex. You like the movement. Yes, yeah. it's so fun. Like, I literally, the past couple of weeks, I've been just grinding. Like, yesterday, I just did a 12 and a half hour stream. Okay. Like, I love Apex. Yeah, for the movement, and then not only that, like, I feel like the uh, the battle royale aspect, like, I feel like every other game, for the most part, it's like, individual. I mean, obviously, it's, like, team-based, but in yeah. Apex, it's really, really team-based. Like, oh, yeah. you need to make sure everyone's on point. Everyone's listening, you have one guy slacking, you know, obviously you're probably gonna like die the squad. So uh, I'd honestly say Apex, I really enjoy Apex. If you, could, uh, if you could collab with like anybody, you know, they don't have to be already in the gaming space or the, con you know, the streaming space, any of that. If you could collab with anybody, play some, you know, just vibe days, it doesn't even have to be on stream, just vibing. Who you wanna collab with? Post Malone. He plays COD. Yeah, he's, he's vibey. I like Posty. And I like his music as well, so. He's been playing a lot of Apex, I feel like. Yeah, and Apex, yeah. I, I, I've been watching so Apex. So Apex, COD, you know he's gonna be on the new COD when it comes out. Oh, 100%. But I wanna get with him. I like if... I don't, see why, I don't see why we couldn't set, you know, something I never like contacted that. him, but I don't even know I'm how sure, to contact. I'm sure you absolutely Follows me on IG, though. Really? Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of tight. So this is, this is a pretty important question. Um, how does it feel being, you know, like a pretty big representative of the, you know, the Hispanic community you know, to be that guy that, you know, a lot of, maybe, you know, a lot of the young people, they look up to. Like, what's that like for you? No, it's cool because a lot of people will like kind of, they go through like the similar stuff that I've been through in terms of like, you know, the your parents being supportive and stuff like that. Like, mine wasn't too bad just because like my mom, she was like a single mom growing up and like she kind of just let us do whatever. Play your games, but like, you know, get off by this time, stuff like that. So yeah. like, it wasn't that bad on me, but in terms of like whenever my stepdad came, he didn't really like understand gaming and stuff like that. He didn't really like support it. But then like slowly you realize like, oh, like, you know, stuff like that. But it's cool to see like, you know, people come in my chat saying like, hey, you know, I come from a Hispanic family. They don't really understand stuff like that just because of like their background. So like, I kind of relate to that in a way. So like, it's cool that I'm able to, you know, they're like, oh, this guy could do it. Like, why can't I do it? So I was in the military. I had two really close friends that were from Mexico. And I learned real quick that Hispanic families are very supportive. You know, they're, they're all about family. Yeah. And um, I, I love that. So would you say that you, you owe a lot to your mom? You oh, know, for, for sure. For letting you, you know, oh, 100%. She game was so, and like follow your, your, your passions and stuff? Yeah, 100%. Because like other Hispanic like friends that I had, like they would always just say like, oh, I got the chancla. Like they, I would always, because like, you know what the chancla is? No. It's, it's like a sandal and like, Basically, you get whooped or whatever. Like, well, you don't get whooped, but like they spank you or whatever. Yeah. For so, me, what do they like, call it again for you? Like, like, chakla. It's like it's literally just like a sandal. So like a Mexican flip -flop. sandal. And, and they, they just they go. Bop. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give you a good one. Yeah. So basically, like they would always say, like, oh, I can't do this. Like even friends I would play online, like you know, they they come from like a, a Hispanic background, and like you just hear the mom like yelling, like get off the game, stuff like that. And like I never really experienced that. Just like I mean, my mom would tell me like get off, like they'll play too late, but I never experienced like the stuff that they experienced were like, you know, they're really, really strict. So like, shout out to my mom, just cause like, if it was, if she was strict and I could have gamed, then like, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now, so. She was understanding. Yeah. You know, you've been gaming for a long time. Gaming is huge right now. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody wants to be a gamer, everybody wants to get paid to do it, everybody wants to be a content creator, a streamer. If they, like, what would you say is a, a piece of advice that you could give to someone that's younger than you that wants to be, you know, a gamer or a content creator, or whatever, maybe a piece of advice that you wish you had, you know, back in the day. Ooh, um, it's a toughie because it's important. Honestly, just if I were to have a PC back then and just start uh, creating like content in terms of like streaming, 
upload on YouTube, stuff like that. Uh, that's definitely what I would have done back then. So if honestly, if I had to get any advice is get a PC, start streaming. Honestly, stream on whatever you have, your console, PC, all that stuff. Like literally stream as much as possible because even if it's just a couple of viewers, you never know if someone's lurking and be like, oh, like, yo, let's play together, let's collab. You know, just little stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, you never know. There's a lot of luck in this game. There truly is. But, you know, the more time that you put into it, the chances of you getting lucky go way up. This Tech Zero original was brought to you today by Totino's Pizza Rolls. I appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate you coming out. I learned a lot about you. You're a legend. You're out there killing it. And uh, you're going to keep killing it. So thank you so much for coming Thanks out. For